Okay, we're here doing the uh, short response section of the January 2010 Regents for Geometry. Uh, question number 29. Question number 29 uh, in RST. RST is 46. That's that angle right there, and RS is congruent to ST. That means these two angles are the same. So subtract 46 away from 180, get 134. Divide it by 2 because these two angles are the same. 67, that means each one of these is the same. Each one of these is 67. Question number 30, you got two uh, rectangular prisms, and uh, they have the same volume. Uh, volume of prism is uh, length times width times height. So we got 10 times 2 times h, uh, that's the volume of this prism. We got 5 times w times h, that's the volume of this prism. And um, you set them equal to each other, you solve them. The trick is here, there's two unknowns. But both of these guys have H in it, so you divide out by H and 5, and then you get just W equals 4. Question 31, there are lots of different ways you could do it. I just counted, to be honest with you. I went down 6 over 2.5 to get to the midpoint at the center, and then I just went down 6, that's me subtracting 6, and I went to over 2.5, that's me adding 2.5 to get the uh, coordinate for R. 32, how are we going to make this with our compass? What we're going to do is we're going to make a little mark. We're going to stretch it out, make sure that we, we're going to stretch our compass out so that it's the length of AB. Make a mark here. Just make a little, like, arc, okay? And then you reset the compass with the pointy part over here. Make another mark, just like that. And, um, and that's it. You know, it's, uh, these two essentially become the uh, radii of the same circle. 33, 33, just draw it in. Um, 3 and 6, you want to find out x, you know 15. Well, there's a proportion. This triangle is similar to the big one. So you say 3 is to x as 9 is to 15. Cross, multiply, and solve. 34, 34. Um, this is uh, where the centroids intersect. They intersect in a 2 to 1 ratio. So TD is 2x and DB is x. Uh, and you just say, you know, 2x plus x is equal to 9. Um, TD, honestly, is just 2 thirds of 9 if you wanted to do it that way as well. Uh, the answer you're going to get is 6. 35. Okay. Look, this is a dilation. Dilations don't change angle measurements, they just change the size of the image. So, you know, look, angle K is going to stay the same. Um, KM, the dilation factor was 2. That's what that number right there is, which means you double everything up. And KM is 2. Here's a proof. Okay, you want to prove this thing is a, uh, you want to prove this is a rhombus. Obviously, you always state the given information first. Then you got this triangle right here. Okay, LM is congruent to LN. Why? Well, two angles in a triangle are congruent, that's these two angles, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. It's kind of like the idea of the triangle being isosceles. The problem is, is that when you refer to a triangle being isosceles, you're really referring to its sides. So this is, uh, this is kind of like another way of doing it just by talking about the angles. So two, sides are, two angles are congruent, the sides opposite are congruent. Then uh, JM is congruent to LM by substitution. Okay, because JM was congruent to this one, and this is congruent to that, so therefore these two are congruent. Um, this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side because you know it's a parallelogram. Then I just use the chain rule. And finally, JKLM is a rhombus because, you know, a parallelogram with uh, congruent size is rhombus. 37, okay. So um, basically, okay, let's take it in parts, right? Uh, what are the points that are five units away from the origin? Five up, five down, five left, five right, form a circle. What are the points that are equidistant from both the x and y axes? They are the perpendicular bisectors of the axes. That's what this line and this line are. And then uh, what points satisfy both conditions? This point, this point, this point, and this point. So those four. Okay, and uh, 38, I'm going to be honest with you, I really just used my calculator for this one. Um, but uh, so here's what I did. I, I took this, I entered it in the table of values in my calculator. I went to the table of values, I looked it up. 
plotted them down, okay, if you want. Uh, I can show that to you. Just send me an email or, or post, and uh, I'll show you how to use your calculator to get the table of values. This, you can't graph right away. You have to rearrange it first. In this form, you can tell it's slope, it's y-intercept, its slope is 7, it's going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, you know. And then all you got to do is find the point of intersection right there, point of intersection.